For many decades, silicon transistors are getting smaller and smaller, but they are fast approaching the limits at which they can no longer shrink. To continue the Morse law, researchers are investigating new materials, and atomically thin materials look really promising. Atomically thin materials are supermaterials, which are just a few atoms, one, two or three atoms thin. For instance, one of them is graphene, and another one is molybdenum disulfide, and there are many others. These atomically thin materials are so thin that they are called 2D materials, because they are simply lacking the third dimension, just like Pac-Man uh, video game. <laughs> What is so attractive to the researcher is that these materials have special thermal and electrical properties. In this new paper, researchers developed a new device, which is atomically thin memristor. This is a silicon wafer covered with many thousands of such memristors. Memristors are very interesting because they act just like neurons in our brain. They comprise compute and data storage function just in one device. Then, from these atomically thin memristors, they build an atomically thin microchip, which performs in-memory computing. This research has already attracted a lot of attention from top semiconductor companies. As a proof of concept, they created a spiky neural network, which consists of thousands of these uh, thin memristors. And they went even a step further and they tested this chip on a standard task, classifying handwritten digits. And they got 90% accuracy while consuming less power than a standard digital CMOS chip. These new atomically thin memory stirs, they are also called atom resters. So atom resters are memory stirs which are built in these atomically thin materials. These new atom resters are used to implement spike in neural networks, which are closely mimicking the way our brain computes, and this makes this compute extremely efficient. Nowadays, we hear a lot about conventional neural networks, which is like the one behind ChatGPT, but spike in neural networks is just a whole new class of neural networks. Basically, conventional neural networks are sort of static functions. They take input from several neurons and compute a single output. In spiking neural network, neural net adjusts synapses again and again until it finds a new pattern, a pattern of behavior which is better at finding the solution. And over time, it discovers which patterns are the best. So, so the way I look at it is if you're wanting to deploy intelligence to the data center and you're going to have, you know, vast troves of knowledge that are built up in data sets, uh, databases that exist on disk right next to those processors, conventional architectures are probably going to do very well for a long period of time uh, for that. Um, on the other hand, if you want to deploy the intelligence out into the world in systems, in your vehicles, into robots, um, uh, or even into just your cell phone, maybe, you know, that, that there's that real time interaction that's required. That's where neuromorphic uh, computing will, will really thrive and succeed in the future. And the thing is that spike in neural networks are rare fire spikes. So they shuffle less data than typical artificial neural networks, and that's why they drain much less power. That's why spike in neural networks are proven to be more efficient for the real world applications. When you're planning your day, or you're trying to find an optimal route, or while processing audio or video signals, any task where there is this temporal uh, content to the signal. But I think where neuromorphic architecture clearly thrives, and I think that it, it's very clear that it will succeed in the long term, I believe, is where you, we need to deploy this intelligence into devices that respond to real world change and stimulus and, and have to um, it, it control systems. So in response to that stimulation, uh, make decisions, inferences, adapt to add you know, to its knowledge uh, and, and to do that in this real time setting. What's interesting, the research in the direction of 2D devices ongoing now for more than five years. However, till now they were not able to produce a device which can uh, at the same time compute and store the data in a single device. 
Another big challenge was fabrication, because up to date they used a different process than is used for conventional chips. And these 2D devices are even more fragile than transistors, so you can easily destroy them. Previously, IBM also experimented with 2D materials for chips, and some years ago they fabricated a logic circuit based on graphene. But eventually IBM abandoned this approach. It's not clear why. It could be that it was very difficult to manage these fragile 2D materials, because when you put it to application, you can easily damage them. While in this work, they are using a slightly more robust material, a slightly thicker material than IBM used. The big advantage of this new Atom Reister is that here they've used the compatible fabrication process to the one which is used for traditional chips. Actually, they fabricated the 2D uh, Memristor chip as a layer on top of the CMOS chip. And the CMOS chip is used to control the Memristors and their switching. So it's compatible to the CMOS technology and it's essential for the future uh, scaling of these devices and also for the price. These advanced atom resistors can enable the chips of the future and new applications which previously didn't exist. As a next step, the researchers plan to fabricate 300 mm wafers in this technology. As a hardware engineer, I'm really interested in such research because it's a combination of everything, you know, a state of the art. It's a combination of advanced materials, neuromorphic computing and spike in neural networks. And what else is interesting, this paper was, this research was done in Politecnico di Milano, which is one of the top tech universities in Europe. So if you want to become a hardware engineer, just like me, or you want to do a PhD, this is a place to go in Europe. If you want to support my channel, my work, the link to the Patreon is below. I write interesting stuff there. Thank you for spending these 10 minutes with me. See you in the next video.